morning guys my name is crystal welcome to my youtube channel welcome all subscribers welcome new if you like my videos please press the like button please do subscribe it is wednesday morning here in Rochester, kent alexa good morning good morning today in 1877 the first ever test cricket match was played between Australia and England at the MCG ground in Melbourne. Sadly, even after all this time we're no closer to explaining the rules of cricket to the uninitiated. Alexa, what's the time, please? The time is 7.51am. Alexa, the date? Alexa, what is the date? It's Wednesday the 15th of March. Alexa, what's the weather like? In Rochester, it's zero degrees Celsius with partly sunny skies. Today, you can expect lots of clouds, with a high of 9 degrees and a low of zero degrees. Alexa, can you tell me a joke? This week I've got some special guests telling jokes. Just say, tell me a comic relief joke. Tell me a comic relief joke. Alexa, tell me a comic relief joke. In support of comic relief, I've got some jokes from some of the UK's best love celebs. Here's a joke from Greg James. What did the llama say when he got kicked out of the zoo? Alpaca my bags, is what it said. <laughs> Can I interest you in another joke? Yes. Okay. Here's a joke from Greg James. What do you call a dragon with heartburn? Bad news for the nearest village. Greg's on fire with these gags. Want another joke? Yes. Okay. Here's a joke from Adam Thomas. How would you get a group of Pikachus onto a bus? Pokemon. <laughs> I think Adam could give up the day job. Would you like another joke? No. Okay. To support comic relief, you can say, add a comic relief red nose to my shopping basket. So it's Wednesday. Um, I've turned on the news because I got up about half past seven this morning because it's getting really lighter early in the morning now. So even when you do would like to have an extra bit of sleep, the light bursts in through the window and it wakes you up. So I got up about 7.30 and to the news that um, school teachers are on strike. They want more pay. Uh, apparently there, a lot of workers are working on the minimum wage and you've got people in jobs uh, going to food banks and I watched a program last night Rich, Rich Kids Go Skint where this posh lad of 19 came to stay with a woman called uh, Claire with her son and um, he stayed on the sofa and he, he in their house and he stayed with them and saw how they lived like on the bread line she owned businesses but they weren't making money so she owned a couple of businesses they weren't making money and she had to do another job and she still wasn't making enough money. She said she was left with 15 pence at the end of the month, I think, 15p. So this posh lad accompanied Claire to food banks, food banks. And I don't know, but it looked like they came back with a bag of prawns. I, I don't know. They had meat bags, veg bags and pasta bags and she came back with a meat bag and they managed to cook a prawn meal a meal with prawns in 
So what it's saying is that people in jobs aren't making enough money to support their children. Some of them aren't. And this woman had two businesses and was having an extra job. She said um, it was because of COVID. They didn't make enough money over COVID. And the debt over COVID, they're not making enough money to, to pay it off. So he was, he gave this Claire a brand new laptop. She had a, she had a, she, she had um, a broken laptop. Well, a laptop that was a bit old and shoddy. So he, his parting gift to Claire was a brand new laptop. Um, so that was nice, wasn't it? Um, so I watched that last night. Rich Kids Going, going Skint, it's called. Um, it's TV though, isn't it? It's television and behind the scenes, a lot of TV programmes are rigged. Um, they're, they're, it's not natural. They're People are told what to say, what to do. Things are cut off, things are added, and you don't know what's the truth and what isn't. So, I, I, you know, telly is like a pinch of salt with me, as are the newspapers, because you don't know what's real and what isn't, to be honest. Not unless you meet someone face to face and hear the story from the horse's mouth. Um, so, you know, I, I, I know that TV, is it's like staged you don't get the real the, the real you don't get the real deal do you it's a setup people are all airbrushed and made up put nice clothes on and told what to do so this claire had a house and she 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 had things I mean they're not going to go I, I don't know I haven't watched it are they going to go into a common or garden bed sit you know a bed sit go in someone's bed sit and have a look around it I don't know um anyway I watched that um I'd spent a lot of time around my mum's yesterday listening to my mum and she'd obviously heard from her sister Linda and uh, that upset her a bit, I think, because her, her sister had, hasn't bothered to see my mum in several years. Um, it's a very closed-off family now. I don't know what was going on there, but my mum, my mother was adopted as a child. And so my, my, my mum was one of four children, and her mother, Joyce, put my mum into care and her brother Rodney um, or Malcolm she, well Joyce put two of them into care and she kept two of the other children and of course that's going to cause a bit of mental upset between the two children that were put into care and the rest of the family isn't it so I mean I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but I can see why my mum is the way she is. Because she was put into care as a child and it couldn't have been very nice knowing that your mum to chose two children out of four to put into care and keep the other two. I, I, I couldn't do that. Um, so that is a bit wicked. So she, yeah, she's... She was in care as a child, my mum was. So, yeah, I spent um, hours round with my mum. Um, I just, I'm quite happy to sit and let everybody else get on with everything and I'll just keep in the background all quiet. I don't need attention I don't need it I'm quite happy to sit indoors and watch the telly read my magazines do my puzzles and um, 
do things responsibly because I'm going to look into this home office business about human rights and them being breached because you know I don't like the way I'm treated when I go outside when I go into shops and it went on when my dad took me to All Hallows, stable cottages and all those holiday camps that I went with to, with my dad where the people, especially at All Hallows, where I was being abused by my father, the residents at All Hallows, the holiday makers were absolutely awful to me. Awful. Um, and I'll never forget the songs that were played when I was in those caravans with my father as any abused child when their father abuses them remembers the smells what songs were playing when they were abused and what was going on a child never forgets and I never will and I never will forget when I was in my father's bedroom at Victoria Road what music was playing in the bedroom and what he said to me and then when my dad took me to Tesco's which is now not existing in Chatham it's it's not there anymore and Tesco's staff knew who my mum was and they knew that I wasn't Derek's wife because they knew my mum they'd spoken to her so the abuse that was going on in Tesco's in Chatham because they knew who my mum was they all knew her before I even came down to Chatham in 2008 from Gloucester. The cover-ups by the Tesco staff in Chatham. My dad used to argue with my mother and he would walk out and she would be crying in Tesco's and the staff would completely ignore her. And when I came down in 2008, I witnessed it. My, my dad would have a mood. He, drive, he drove me and my mum down to Tesco's, into Tesco's park, car park. He would have a mood on or something, and he would just leave me and my mum in Tesco's and drive off. Just drive off and leave my mum in Tesco's. And she was crying. She was crying in Tesco's. And I said, Mum, I, I said, you know, we're going to have to get a taxi or something. Can we, she's driven off. And she said to me, he's always doing this. You know, abandoning her in Tesco's in Morrison's car park and leaving her to walk home. But, um, yeah, when Dad took me uh, to Tesco's um, and he took me, took, took me to Hempstead Valley Sainsbury's, uh, the customers and staff were absolutely appalling and ignoring what was going on, turning a blind eye as they did at Go Train. When I went to Go Train and I was sexually assaulted in Go Train's kitchen area, you know, where they make coffee, the, the staff were turning a blind eye, blind eye to it, laughing, giggling, and pretending I didn't exist. Didn't exist while I was being sexually abused. I didn't exist. Turn a blind die to it and ignore it and pretend you don't exist. And they're getting immense pleasure out of watching you being physically assaulted. So dad would take me to Tesco's, he would take me to Morrison's, he would say uh, you can get shopping, sort of grooming, get shopping, get anything you like and then he would take me to the caravan parks and holiday homes and abuse me and I just had the feeling especially at um, Park Holiday Caravan Park in Dover that they all knew what was going on. All the residents at the time as my dad took me to these holiday homes I, I had the the feeling that all the staff and all the residents and holiday makers knew what he was doing. So I'm not, I'm not giving up, I'm going to keep carrying on. I am telling the truth, I'm willing to take a lie detector test. And I think it's disgusting who 
allowed my dad to abuse me over several years and get away with it, including the police. And now he's dead, he can't speak up for himself because he would have been a witness. He would have been a witness, wouldn't he? I'm not going to give in and I'm not going to stop. My human rights are being breached. Okay, teachers want pay. Railway workers want pay. I want an apology and compensation. I have been abused since I was a child and the police have done nothing to stop it or prevent it. The police came out to my mum when my dad had physically assaulted my mother. As a child I was a witness, I saw him punch my mother in the face. And the police would come out and he would say my mother was mad. And I knew she wasn't. I knew she wasn't. Because I'd witnessed it. But they don't believe children police, do they? Of course they don't. But, but to, to actually get police officers in the house and you've witnessed your father punch your mother and then your father says to the police, my mum's making it up, she's mad. And you know she isn't. She told me, the neighbours knew. The neighbours would watch him punch her. They'd watch through their windows and watch my mum being physically assaulted and punch my, my dad and they didn't do anything. And then in turn it happened to me. The same thing happened to me. I began to, to get the same experiences as my mum from men. Men would physically abuse me, punch me about and, and no one would give a fucking shit. They wouldn't care. So I'm going to write to the Home Office, as I wrote to the Court of Human Rights in 2009 and 10, about not being allowed to see my children, even though I had 50-50 access to them, and they returned my paperwork back. And then all of a sudden, the Court of Human Rights didn't exist anymore. I sent pages and pages of evidence and documents to the Court of Human Rights and they sent it back to me in the post and then a few weeks later the Court of Human Rights didn't exist anymore. Surprise, bloody surprise there. I have spent, I spent over 10 years fighting for my son, fighting, solicitors, Court of Human Rights, no one fucking did anything to help me get my child back. Too late now, he's 18 in December. Everybody wants everything, but you stamp all over me and don't help me. I'm all for people getting paid, you know, what they should get paid. But keep ignoring me, ignore me, pretend I'm not there, forget it all happened, because my father's dead and there's no witness. Just forget it. Bang, slam, you know, trying to make out me and my mum are mad, setting us off, triggering us off. When the perpetrator's got away with it and he's dead. Fuck you. Fuck all of you to fuckery and I don't give a shit what I say anymore my kids have grown up you never let me fucking look after my kids properly you left them with perpetrators you can all get fucked all of you see you later